Hi, so this is uh, Adobe CC Animate. My name is Mark Gatter, and I'm just going to go through a few very basic things here, really, so that if you are planning on looking at Adobe Animate, this might give you a little bit of a help to get started. So first of all, I'm going to use HTML5 Canvas, and this is the stage. Now, if I click down here, I can choose a color, and in fact, if I had an image open in the background in Photoshop and I could see that I could even click on any bit of that image so I could choose a color here if I want if I've got a brand color that I need I could click on that and then type in the hashtag for the brand color that I want and that's a hash with six digits two each for RGB red green blue um, sometimes you use letters as well as well as numbers with these because if you just use numbers on their own Clearly, you can only go up to 99 for each pair, but with letters, you can cover the full range of 256 shades. So I can choose whatever I want there. I can choose a size. This is the default size, 550 by 400. Frames per second, I could change that. That's pretty standard. So I'm actually going to choose here uh, a white background. Now, if I draw a shape on top of that and I click on the oval tool, for example, I can choose a stroke color and a fill color. And here I can change the width of the stroke. So if I told the stroke to be uh, 8 pixels wide, uh, I could select a style for it as well. I'm not going to uh, divert from this for a second. And then just click and drag, and there is an oval. Now, if I click on the inside of that, that's one object. If I click on the stroke of that, that's another object. So I'm going to get the rectangle tool and pick a different fill color and a different stroke color and draw a rectangle. Now again, if I click on the stroke of the rectangle, it's broken it down even further. There's one piece. Here's another piece. So there are multiple sections to the stroke around this rectangle. But if I click on the fill and get rid of that, it leaves a big hole. Because when you've got overlapping simple objects like this on the same layer, and you subtract the fill of part of one of them, it's going to eat a hole in the one beneath. Now if I get the selection tool and hover near that stroke, you see that curved line appear next to it? I can click and drag and distort the entire frame and there's a sort of Elvis type shape. I'm going to get the oval tool again. This time I'll hold down the shift key which means as I click and drag I'm drawing a perfect circle. And again if I get rid of the stroke on that one it doesn't eat all but the fill does. This shape however I'm going to select it and then go modify and convert it to a group and this little thin line appears around it. Now I can put that on top of the shape behind it, deselect it by clicking away from it, click on it again, and move it, and this time it doesn't eat a hole through it. So grouping things takes away that problem of one shape eating a hole with another shape. Now if I've got this selected and I go up to the Edit menu and down to Copy, I could then create a new layer that's the new layer icon. I could double click on it and call it Elvis I. And then I could paste onto this new layer. Edit, paste in place or paste in center. Paste in place puts a copy of it exactly where the original came from. And that object is now on this layer, which I can turn off visually by clicking on the eye icon. If I wanted, I could lock it, which means I can't move that anymore. I can only move things on other layers. And I could select it, which means I can draw on it, write on it, put other objects on it. Now, as well as the oval tool and the rectangle tool, there's also this tool. This is the Polystar tool. If I select that, then in properties, I'm just going to click and drag and draw a shape. In properties, 
I've got options under tool settings and in options I could say how many sides I wanted to have and if I wanted to have a star point size. Now for a polygon the star point size isn't going to affect it at all but if I choose star and say OK now when I draw a shape it's going to be a star and point 0.5 means that these intermediate points are being dragged halfway back towards the center of the object. So you can draw stars and polygons perfectly well. You see if I zoom in on this I'm going to use command plus and then hold down the hold down the spacebar on its own and I can drag the stage around. You see how this object the corners are rounded. I'm going to select the whole thing And here, under Stroke, I've got Width, Scale, Cap, Join, Mitre. If I choose Mitre here, the default value is 3. Now that little finger with an arrow means that I can click and drag, and at 1, I get a beveled point. At 2, at 2, I still get a beveled point. At three, hmm, that's no good. Let's just do that again. Let's just move this shape over a bit, actually. Let's turn that layer off. So I'll select the star again. And mitre, there's five. Now, if I highlight that and say I want three, enter. Now that's okay. So I'm going to go for two, enter starting to get rounded. One, enter, and now they're beveled. They're quite quite unsharp. So depending on what number here I've got, depending on what number I've got for the mitre, I can change the pointedness of my object. I've also got round, bevel, and for the cap, if I was creating lines, I could have none which would mean that the line would just come to a sharp end, and I'll show you, I'll draw one. That's a rounded cap. Let's zoom in again a little bit. That's none, and that's a square cap. So if the end of the line is about here, none cuts it off flush with the end of the line. Square will sort of draw a square around that, and rounded will draw a circle with that as its center. Like so. Command minus, minus, minus takes me back to whatever size stage I want. Here I've got a zoom tool as well. You could say fit in window, or 100%, and so on. So here are the line drawing tool, 03. There's a pencil, there's a brush, and there's a paintbrush tool. And they're kind of different. So I'm going to get rid of all these. Control A and delete. And then on layer 1, which is invisible, so I'll select it and make it visible again. I'll do the same. Control A, delete. And I'm going to use the pencil tool to begin with. Now the pencil draws with a stroke, which I'll make more visible but no fill. And you can set the size of the stroke to whatever you want. You also have modifiers with a pencil tool. There are three. There's straighten, smooth, and ink. If I change it to straighten, and then I draw roughly a rectangle, when I let go, it straightens it. If I use the smooth tool, and I try to draw roughly a triangle, it smooths it a little bit. It smooths the line. If I use the ink bottle, the ink bottle is supposed to give you an absolutely accurate rendition of whatever you draw. It doesn't. It smooths it as well. So I don't see a great deal of difference between the ink bottle tool and the smooth tool. But straighten tool, that's pretty useful if you want to do freehand shapes that actually look like drawn rectangles and triangles and so on. 
If I choose the brush tool, this one, on the other hand, draws with a fill but not with a stroke. So there's my brush size at the moment. If I click down here, that gives me different options for painting. That gives me different shape options. This gives me different size options. And if I use the paintbrush tool, again, I can create a line. It's using a stroke, not a fill. There's an interesting difference between the brush and the paintbrush. If I wanted to draw, for example, a little bit of a landscape, so I'll draw the ground, and then we'll have a bush here, and another one here, and a tree, and another bush. And I want to fill these with a color. The paint bucket tool should allow me to do that, but I'm going to choose a different color. We'll have an orange and then click here and I have no trouble filling these shapes with the paint bucket tool. If I've drawn those shapes with the paintbrush tool, so I'll make the stroke a bit wider and I'll use a similar kind of orange color and there's my ground and here's a tree and then I get the paint bucket tool to fill it with and I'm going to change the color here so it's obvious and click in there nothing happens occasionally it will but usually it won't and the reason for that is because the brush creates a fill color but not a stroke and the paintbrush creates a stroke but not a fill and one allows you to fill it with a paint bucket, and one basically doesn't. Now there are things in Animate called tweens, and a tween means that you're creating some kind of, of shift, either a shift of position or a shift in shape over a period of time. And there are three kinds. There's a shape tween, a classic tween, and a motion tween. And I'll do these in series. I'm going to close this and not save it and open up a new one. 